to the Accelerate Church television broadcast. We are so glad that you could join us today. In this episode, Pastor Jeremy is teaching on how to win the fight of faith. We believe this message is going to strengthen, encourage you, and can change your life forever. Let's head in there right now. Been talking to you about how to win the fight of faith, and I continue to get a lot of feedback on this of people telling me, Man, Pastor, I am going through one thing after another, and this could not be more timely for everything I'm going through. There's a lot of people that understand they're in a fight of faith. Not all do, and I, I tell people a lot of times, especially when they walk the aisle, welcome to the fight club. You've heard me say that. And not everybody understands that when they walk an aisle and they call on Jesus to be their Lord, that they're joining a fight club. What do I mean? Well, it's a fight to live righteous. You see, you don't realize your flesh has a problem with you till you decide to serve God. Yeah. And then you realize, oh, it's got a problem with me doing this. Because, you know, your flesh just wants you to do what you want to do all the time. But the very nature of coming and surrendering to Jesus, making him your Lord, means you're no longer in charge. He's now the big boss. I mean, Lord, it means he's your master. It means you're his bondservant. You do what he says. Now, see, this isn't uh, real deep, especially for a Wednesday night crowd in a remnant church, but I need to remind you of this. You've got to be sured up on this. You've got to make sure Jesus is your Lord, and you've got to live with him as your Lord 24 hours a day, seven days a week, never backing up, never backing down, continuing on with him. Somebody say amen. amen. From the Lord's end of things, I want you to know this. The fight's already settled. The win is already in the bag. Now, it's dangerous if you're playing sports to think, well, we're going to beat this team, no problem, because teams have a way of just hanging in there when you have that mindset, right? But when it comes to God uh, and the enemy, it's just no contest. The problem is when you look around the church, not just nationwide in America, but worldwide, it seems like the devil wins more than the church, that shouldn't be happening. In other words, this is a fact. I'm not, I'm not speaking doubt and unbelief. I'm speaking factual, so listen to me. When people are diagnosed with cancer, and I'm not saying in this church. I'm saying I'm talking nationwide. They may attend church. They may not. But when they're diagnosed with cancer, more times than not, cancer wins. It's sad. But when it comes to Christians that are diagnosed with a terminal disease, many times that disease wins. It shouldn't be that way. But we have to face up to this. Why is that happening? I heard uh, Pastor Rick Renner, who pastors in Russia, talking about this the other day. Uh, Aaron and I took a quick day trip to Oklahoma City, and we were listening to this. And, man, it went off on the inside of me. He said, Lord, why is it, when I look across the landscape of the church worldwide, it seems like the devil gets the better of Christians most of the time. And he said the Holy Spirit told him there's three reasons for that. One, order. I'm going to show you. There's principalities and powers. The devil even has order. Most people don't have a clue about order in church. And if there's any church anywhere that has order about it, people love to scream, cult, cult, cult. Because the enemy hates order. Yet he has order in the demonic world. That's crazy. But the Holy Spirit spoke this to Rick Renner, and it, it bore witness to me. I said, wow, man, that's something else. So order commitment, and discipline. They're missing in most churches. That's why so many don't win. Now keep this in mind. The fight of faith is not so much against, though I'm going to talk more about that a little bit, but it's for what Jesus purchased for you. But there is an enemy, and his entire purpose is to keep you from what Jesus purchased for you. You see, there's a man that's going to arise on the scene very soon named the Antichrist. You've heard that before, haven't you? Well, John the Apostle in 1 John said, there are already many Antichrist spirits out here fighting people. But thank God, 1 John 4, 4 says, but greater is he that's in you than all these Antichrist spirits that are in the world. Now hold on. If Antichrist spirits are in the world, these are demon influences that are trying to get you to unplug from Christ. 
So the fight of faith does involve taking on these principalities and these powers. They're trying to keep you from what Jesus purchased. And I've got good news for you. From the Lord's end of things, the victory's already settled. That's why one of my favorite verses in the Bible, and why don't you go ahead and say thank God for the word. Second Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. I know we've looked at this a lot, but look at it again. I'm telling you from the Lord's end of things, it's already been settled. What has? The victory. Why do I say that so bluntly? Right in the face of what I acknowledged a while ago, that so many Christians don't get the victory. Because faith isn't based on experience. Faith is based on the Word. You've got to know this. So many people try to base what they believe God for on the experience of good people they know. But let me tell you, God is speaking every day to His people. That doesn't mean they're listening or obeying. But the Bible still says, now, everybody say right now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. In Christ, he does that. That's a key part, in Christ. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Thank God for that. Talked about that in prayer the other day. Talked about how when I was a young child, my dad had that old white bottle of Old Spice. He would splash on there, that aftershave. You remember that old, old, old Spice? You remember that? He had Brute back in the day, too. I know he did. That Brute bottle. You ever seen that? He was a man. I liked that. But I remember as a kid smelling. could smell when my dad had shaved and would slap that on. I don't know if it was cologne or aftershave or what, but I loved the smell of that. Would you believe somebody gave me a gift with that Old Spice, that old white bottle? I saw that on my desk. I said, praise the Lord. You're supposed to have a fragrance of God on you. And that fragrance is victory. Now that's exciting when you're believing God for victory. But listen to me. When not everyone you know walks in victory, they don't like the way victory smells. And some people don't like the smell of his fragrance. But... To the trained nostril, let me say it this way, the obedient nose loves the smell. But i I got to point this out. I don't want to get off on smells. I want you to think about this. If you are not experiencing victory, you got to keep following the Lord. Because this is just rumbling on the inside of me. He's always going to lead you in triumph. You may not be walking in at this moment, but if you'll keep following sooner or later, you're going to find yourself smack dab in the middle of another victory. But too many people quit halfway through so they don't ever experience what I'm talking about. And that has a domino effect on other people who, like I mentioned, their faith is in others' experience. And they say, now they're good people, but they didn't experience this victory. I know, but let me tell you this. Even if your Aunt Myrtle was super sweet and a godly woman and she didn't experience victory, the Bible still says that God always leads us in triumph in Christ. You know what this tells us, and I want you to think with me tonight. Many times, the victory escapes people's lives because of an issue they have with following. You can stay up to date with everything happening at Accelerate Church by downloading our app. Add events directly to your calendar, receive notifications when services are going live, hear previous sermons preached by Pastor Jeremy, and you can even give right there from your mobile device. The Accelerate Church app has everything you need right there in the palm of your hand. Head over to your app store today and type in Accelerate Church Amarillo to download to your mobile device. He's always going to lead you in triumph. You may not be walking in at this moment, but if you'll keep following sooner or later, you're going to find yourself smack dab in the middle of another victory. But too many people quit halfway through so they don't ever experience what I'm talking about. And that has a domino effect on other people who, like I mentioned, their faith is in others' experience. And they say, now they're good people, 
But they didn't experience this victory. I know, but let me tell you this. Even if your Aunt Myrtle was super sweet and a godly woman and she didn't experience victory, the Bible still says that God always leads us in triumph in Christ. You know what this tells us, and I want you to think with me tonight. Many times, the victory escapes people's lives because of an issue they have with following. Now, I remember driving in a city that I was unfamiliar with, and the person I met up with was real familiar with the city, and they said, follow me, there's a restaurant over here, you, you've got to taste this. I said, all right, that's great. And I want you to know, he was my friend. I was young. I was a, a late teen, about 19 years old, in Dallas, Texas, I, in one of the suburbs there. I didn't know that well back then. And I thought, I don't know where this is. This was before cell phones were like they are now, where you just type it in and go. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to follow this guy. He was so hard to follow. We got there. I was like, you knew I was trying to follow you. What were you doing? Cutting all in and out and everywhere. He was hard to follow. God's not hard to follow. God is easy to follow. So let me just say this. If you're not experiencing victory, you need to just stop making excuses and you need to admit something. I've got an issue somewhere with following. And you've got to know this. God did not make following him hard. People try to convolute the issue, but God's made it real easy. Let me just say this bluntly. If you and I will do what he says, we will win. Do you believe that? Let me say it again. If you and I will just do what he says to do, we are going to win. It's over for the enemy. I'm telling you, victory's in the bag. It's a setup. Life is a setup because of Jesus. But many people have an issue then when it comes to following. See, think about how the enemy attacks you when it comes to being even faithful to attend church. You see what I'm talking about? I mean, like, it's, it's difficult, especially when you're a newbie. You know, you just get saved, you're new to all this. You think, man, these people, they act like they can't miss for nothing. I've got a busy life going on. Well, in the busyness, you've got to realize this. Christ always leads you to victory. So you've got to stop and ask yourself, whose idea was it to meet more and more at church? Was this some man in a back room that had a marketing scheme? Or did God himself speak and inspire a man to write in the book of Hebrews that as you see the day approaching, assemble yourselves more and more. See, think about it. God did not make that hard to follow. I can understand that. Now, I'm not dumb, but I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed either. But I can tell you this. If you tell me what to do, I can do it. I've told you that story before. The first time I went and worked for a ministry outside of my dad's, it was a church. They hired me and my wife. 21 years tomorrow. They hired us on the same day before we were married, before we were together. August the 1st, 2001. I went to work not knowing what to expect, thinking I'm going to be over all the media department of copying back then cassette tapes, believe it or not, and CDs had come out. And so I was CDs and tapes, you know, I thought, oh, I can do this. I've been in radio my whole life. I'm made for this. So I show up to duty. Basically, I'm here. And my boss's name was Andy. Great man. Still lives in the area. He's a great man of God. And I, I said, Andy, I'm here. What should I do? He said, today you get to put a desk together. I've never done that in my whole life. I didn't have the courage to tell him I've never done that. My question was, does it have instructions? It does. Okay. He didn't say nothing about doing it quick, thank God. He just said, you got to put a desk together. So you've heard me tell, I won't go into the details, but I followed those instructions. Put it together. So proud of myself. Then he said, oh, yeah, there's a credenza that goes with it. Oh, great. I put that one together. Who needs instructions? I'm almost as handy as Slim Jim himself now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't either. I wasn't. I was talking about Jim Kirkpatrick, for those of you wondering and hear this recording. He's my cousin. Don't worry. I'm the only one that's authorized to call him Slim Jim. <laughs> but maybe Candace could too. I don't know, but that's it. 
Here's what I found. He's a good carpenter. I, I, I wasn't really trained in that department, right? So I don't have that touch. I don't have that. But I decided I'm going to put it together without instructions. Guess what? I got to do that one twice. The first time doing it my way, eyeing it, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that doesn't look good. Undoing everything. Let me get the instructions out and redo it. That reminds me of a lot of Christians' lives. You see, I had a problem with following. I thought I had it figured out because I had the victory before. And you got to be very careful because, see, I've watched people do this. God will miraculously. I've seen some miraculous things in my, in my day. I saw someone experience, I'm telling you, they had children, and I know they didn't have the parts in them because they were blown out. I've, I've seen that in my time. I know the children. I know them by name. Some in this room do too, but I don't want to say too much except I just want you to know this, that just because God did something one way before doesn't mean you can assume he's going to do it that same way next time. Now, what you can guarantee is this. When God says something in his word, that ain't ever going to change. The very first time we came uh, to check out Accelerate, um, I believe my husband came with me that very first time. Um, and I knew that that's what I wanted. I knew that's what I knew that that's where I was called. Um, so me and the kids continued to come back um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. I remember women were thinking that I was a single mom because my husband wasn't there. but. I remained faithful and I kept coming. I would say at that point, our marriage was rocky. Um, I know that had we not stopped or started coming to church, I wouldn't be married today. That was something that I didn't ask him and wake him up every morning and say, you coming this time? Or, you know, Wednesday, you coming today? I just kept coming and I'll say, hey, we're going to church, see you later. And like I said, I remained faithful. I prayed for him. And it was like this one empty seat, like one day he's going to fill this seat. <laughs> uh. So that morning was just like our normal chaotic Sunday morning, getting ready to go. Um, I was in the kitchen, you know, getting the kids breakfast and stuff ready and walked back into my room where my husband was normally still asleep. And he was up putting on a button up shirt. And I remember him just... Sorry. <laughs> I remember him buttoning his shirt up that morning and I knew he wasn't going to the gym because he was wearing a button up shirt. So I was like, well, where are you going? And he said, I'm coming with you to church. So I said, okay. And then I walked out, I was like, praise the Lord, he's coming. <laughs> you know, after my husband came to church with me um, after those months, I was, I think we were at home after church and I said, well, what? cause you to come like with us to church and he said honestly I've seen a change in you and I wanted what you have I would say right around that time um, I thought my marriage was over and that statement alone was confirmation that it's not and for him to see that change in me because I kept showing up now he keeps showing up and my kids keep showing up and now we have his little brother. I would say like my personal little motto for anything is keep showing up and I continually showed up. I didn't care that people thought I was a single mom or that I didn't have a husband at home but one thing I would not do hold on. Um, don't nag them just pray for them and they'll show up. And that's, that's another thing too, it, you showing up and being faithful is going to change the trajectory of everyone behind you and everyone after you. Because one little thing that I had in my mind to remain determined and to keep showing up, it changed my family. It brought me and my husband closer together. It has really strengthened our family. Like I said, we have custody of his little brother now so now we're changing his trajectory and those after him. We have custody of my stepdaughter. We're changing the trajectory of her life. So you remaining faithful and diligent is going to affect more than just you. If you want victory, then you're going to have to get good at following. See, that, that never gets people shouting, that part. Have you noticed that? I mean, even in this Pentecostal church. Why? Because it's your responsibility to follow. He's the leader. 
He's the leader, okay? He's given the Holy Spirit. And those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God and the daughters of God. But notice you're going to have to get good at following his lead. And when you live in, in a time where some people call good evil and evil good, you won't know what to do unless you know the word. That's why I always tell you to say thank God for the word. Here's what I want you to know, real simple tonight. This is not for the real deep theologian, but this will help you. If you'll do what God says, you will win. You see, in him, whenever you read in him, you've got to see this. Look at the verse, 2 Corinthians 2.14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. In Christ. If you see in Christ, you see in him, in your mind you need to see this. Those that obey him. It's when he told you to do something and you do it, you're in him. If he told you to do something and you don't do it, you're not in him. And people say, nah, I don't believe that. Well, try to prove it otherwise anywhere in the scripture. You've got to learn to be in him. Colossians talks about this. Look at this. This is a, I'm telling you, this is like biscuits warming up in the oven. I don't, see, I don't know, my, I don't know if, if your wife or your mama is a good cook. Both of my mom and my wife are, and my mother-in-law, and my sister-in-law. It's a wonder I'm not 400 pounds. But I like it when my, I like it when my wife says, I'm, I'm fixing biscuits and gravy. In fact, Enoch, my 10-year-old, he'll be like, yes, because he already has it figured out. Mama don't play around no more when it comes to biscuits and gravy. <laughs> That's a little, little tune I made up at home there. Mom ain't playing around no more. That's the way I say it. Sorry, you just had to hang in there with me. She ain't playing around no more. I, I smell those biscuits. Man, you get you a slab of butter on there and it just melts. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Did y'all eat supper tonight? I bet you wish you had, huh? <laughs> Don't worry, I'll let out about midnight. You can go eat then. Just joking. But that hot biscuits, have you ever smelled that? You know what I'm talking about. I pulled up in the garage the other night, and I mean, the garage door opened, and my air conditioner in my car blew that. I was like, something smells good. I got out of the car rather quickly. I said, what is that? I made homemade spaghetti. <laughs> See, you ain't got nothing to fear with, as long as the pastor has Miss Aaron around. I ain't going to go starving, that's for sure. But that smell, that aroma, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Why am I talking about smells tonight again? Oh, yeah, because it's in the Word, huh? That's what this message is tonight. I said, man, this is just biscuits and gravy. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. How many are ready to eat some more Word right here, huh? Somebody said, this is crazy. What did I step into? Well, just in the live church, that's all. Not a, a dead church. He says, and you, everybody say, that's me. Colossians 2, 13 is what I'm reading. New King James. Being dead in your trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with Jesus. God has. Having forgiven you all trespasses. Hold on. We can't move too quick. You need to raise your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you for all my trespasses. Being forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. See, you ought to do that quite often. That way you don't forget. Because there ain't a one of us in this room watching by television, listening by radio, not a one of us that hadn't been forgiven of a lot. Sometimes you got to remind yourself of that. If you ever forget, start writing down all the things you did. Then it will hit you pretty quick. Good. Now I should be burning in hell. But he's made me alive. Glory to God. He's forgiven me of all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. See, there's a lot of Christians that don't know the Bible says this. He nailed it to the cross. Now I want you to really hone in now, focus right here at verse 15, Colossians chapter 2. Having disarmed, <laughs> I like that word. King James says spoiled. I said, well, spoiled, disarmed, what does this mean? In the Greek, it means to strip off the clothes. <laughs> I'm sorry, that makes me smile. 
Why? Because this represented the authority, the power that the devil had. And on that cross, Jesus stripped off all of his power and authority. Woo! Praise God. Disarmed principalities and powers. Hey, go ahead and circle principalities and powers right there in your Bible. Principalities and powers. He disarmed them. And I want you to look at this part in Colossians 2.15. He made a public spectacle of them. <laughs> triumphing over them. Somebody say glory to God. You know what this tells you and I? If I'm in him, I should not be held in defeat. No. Why would I be held in defeat? He already disarmed, stripped off the clothes, stripped off the authority. The devil has no authority in the believer's life. Somebody say amen. amen. So you got to learn to get your amen in the right spot. That means so be it even unto me. You know what this tells me also? The closer I follow Jesus, the more triumph I experience. The more victory. Oh, the more winning I see. The fight of faith is ultimately fighting for what Jesus purchased for you. But there are things the enemy has put in your life. And will bring through circumstances, through people, through feelings. Yeah. Through the way you perceive things, your perception. People say, your perception is reality. Yeah, but it could be completely wrong. Doesn't mean it's truth. Just because it's your reality doesn't make it truth. What's the truth? That's the right perspective. Well, the enemy's going to try with everything he has for the rest of your life on this side of heaven to keep you from walking in total life victory, which is God's plan for you. He wants you in victory. I mean, in every area, victory. So somebody say victory. victory. Yeah. Now, two of the main weapons that the enemy uses on believers to keep them from winning are ignorance and disobedience. Well, unfortunately, we do have to stop right there. We are out of time today. However, if you would like to hear more from this series on how to win the fight of faith, you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will find this message in its entirety, plus so many more that you can listen to throughout your week. But if you are in the Amarillo area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett Street here in Amarillo, and our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Or you can write us, email us. We would love to hear from you. If we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church television broadcast.